quite an audience here. How many of you are from the government? Work for the government? One hand, two hands. How many of you like government officers? No hand, no, no, there are a few. Okay, not bad. How many of you think that government officers can innovate to solve your problems? Oh, wow. That's pretty good, pretty good. About two years ago, I was giving a similar talk at the Yale School of Business, Yale University. And I was talking about government and innovation. And the audience thought I was joking. Government, innovation in the same sentence, they really thought I was joking. So many people don't like the government, don't like the government officers because they're inept, corrupt. But then what would we do without the government officers? How would you get your passports? How would you get your land records? How would you pay electricity bill? How would you pay taxes, even if you don't want to? Do you know that the government, the government of Bangladesh, provides 3,000 different types of services to 160 million people through its civil service? My encounter with civil service started in high school when I was trying to get a passport for higher education in the US. It was a very long process, painful. Long lines, multiple times. Then I had to wait for the police officer to come to my home, and then he asked for a bribe. And then there were a few other hoops that I don't even remember. Finally got the passport, got out, left the country, and I thought I would never deal with Bangladeshi civil service ever again. Guess what happened? I came back 17 years later to be thrown into the heart of civil service, to lead a program called A2I, which you have heard of, at the prime minister's office. And it was a civil service reform program. I thought it was a technology program when I started, but became a civil service reform program. My first week on the job was very interesting, scary. I was running a workshop, 16 participants, all senior civil servants from 16 different ministries, they talked about how they wanted to use technology. So I asked for expectations. 15 of the 16 people talked about how they wanted to learn technology, learn about technology, and apply them to their ministry, agriculture, education, healthcare, law and order. And I thought that was an interesting thing. The 16th person, the senior most, was very quiet. I went up to him and asked him what his expectations were. He just jumped at me. He barked at me, really. He said, this is all bogus. I wouldn't have come, but your office, the prime minister's office has called, so I could not say no. This is a waste of my time. You're going to waste five of my days. So just do your utopian lecture on technology. That is not relevant to me. And let me read my newspapers online. So I was quite scared. But then, would angels fear to tread fools rush in? And I was a fool. So I rushed in, spent five days. It was quite interesting, I thought. So again, at the end of the five days, I went and asked all 16 of them for evaluation of what we did. 15 of them said good things, glowing recommendations. They learned a lot. And they would go back and simplify service delivery for citizens. The 16th person was again quiet. I went up to him and asked for his opinion, very scared. What he said changed my life. He said, I've been in the civil service for 30 years. Soon I'll become a secretary. And I've never been in, a, in such a useful workshop in my entire life. I said, why the U-turn? What happened? He said, what we did here, we actually looked at simplifying service delivery processes. Let me show you a picture of that. He said, we actually drew pictures of how we deliver education, how we deliver loans, how we deliver passports. But we never drew pictures of how we do that. And we never eliminated steps from that whole delivery process. Take a look at this single one, which is getting electricity connection in the rural areas. And by simplifying, by eliminating steps, it went from 49 steps to seven. And the number of days that it requires to get electricity went from 20 to 90 days to three to five days. So that's the remarkable change this can happen. So I learned two things from that experience. One, 
he was not reading newspapers online, even though he really said he did. Second thing was that nobody in civil service, nobody in the government for over 100 years asked the question, why don't we look at the service delivery process? Why don't we eliminate unnecessary steps? Why don't we simplify it for the citizens? Because the government is actually designed to be complicated. Why? Because that's how you govern a hundred million people with a few thousand. That's how it's done. So I thought the British had left the subcontinent. I was very wrong. The British still lives on through our civil service and through these complicated processes. So simplification of service delivery became the byword, became the mantra for innovation in civil service in Bangladesh. The empathy training was born. What happens in empathy training? We bring in about 30 government officers from different disciplines, education, agriculture, social service, police, and then we mix them up. We actually have them go to different offices. The policeman goes to the school. The teacher goes to the land office. The land officer goes to a hospital. And they bring back scathing criticisms about what is going wrong. And what happens when they reflect, when they come together, they understand what must be done. In the last six years, we have done many empathy training workshops. About 6,000 civil service have gone through it. And they have launched 1,800 projects, which have changed the lives of millions. I remember this middle-aged doctor who came from a southern district. He realized after the empathy training that 2,000 of the poorest patients don't come to his hospital. Why? Because they don't wear the right clothes. They get pushed around. They don't get the treatment. They can't pay for the diagnostic fees. So what he did, he created a VIP card. You can take a look at that card. It's not a laminated card, nor a smart card. It's a paper. But it's given to the 2,000 families who then get to come to this VIP line that he created. The VIP line for the VIP patients. They get treatment. He also waived diagnostic fees for all his patients, for all his, all his VIP patients. So it gets to the bottom of poverty elevation and treatment for the people who cannot afford it. So he actually violated several rules. Instead of getting reprimanded by the Minister of Health, he was recognized, and now this is getting replicated in all the Upazila health complex in the country. <laughs> and this may, this may form the basis of our universal health care by 2030. Another story. 23 teachers about eight years ago told us that the way we were introducing technology in schools was completely wrong. Completely wrong. They said that they needed teacher training. We have 70 teacher training colleges in the country and about 950,000 teachers. Just do the math. You don't have to be a genius to do the math. So curriculum changes, textbooks change, and teachers don't get trained. If they're lucky, they get to go to a training every 10 to 15 years. So they said that do one thing for us. Use technology to create a social media platform for us. We called it Teachers Portal. And we will train ourselves. We will create content. The better teachers will create contents for the less prepared teachers. And that's what happened. About 400,000 teachers are a part of this Teachers Portal now. And they have created 236,000 digital content that get transferred across the country. So teachers have taken control of their own fate and are training each other. What would actually trigger such innovation within government officers, within civil service? I borrow from Dan Pink. You must have seen the TED Talk by Dan Pink, The Theory of Motivation. So the first trigger is a sense of purpose. We created a sense of purpose that we called TCV, time, cost, and the number of visits. And this went viral within civil service in Bangladesh. So everybody started talking about reducing time, cost, and number of visits by simplifying service delivery process. We did a calculation last year for what had gone on for the last many years, about 10 years of civil service innovation practice in Bangladesh. And we saw across 100 different services that civil servants have saved citizens about 2 billion person days, $8 billion, and 1 billion visits were eliminated from the entire equation. The second trigger for innovation in civil service is a sense of autonomy. So I mentioned 
that since the foundation training, civil service is run by rules. Many of these rules are as strict as religious texts. But we've found civil servants who want to get that sense of autonomy, who want to experiment, who want to get that license to fail. Our Honorable Prime Minister, Cabinet Secretary, Principal Secretary, many of the senior secretaries now talk about failures. It's, it's a good thing to fail. It's a good thing to experiment as long as you improve the lives of citizens. And that has given them a sense of autonomy. And the letter of the law becomes less important than the spirit of the law. The third trigger is a sense of competence. And I talked about the empathy training. The empathy training has given thousands of civil servants that sense of competence to imagine a different world for the citizens and create that world by themselves. So where are we now? I signed up for three months of civil service reform, introduction of technology into the civil service of Bangladesh. It's been 12 years. So after 12 years of seeing thousands of innovations in Bangladesh civil service, I say this with conviction, that it is possible to have innovation in civil service. It's not only possible, it's necessary. It's as necessary as clean air and clean water. Would you rather wait in line for your passport, or would you rather have the passport and birth registration and driving license be delivered to your homes? What would you want to have happen? Second one. OK. If you want the second one, then not only encourage civil service innovation, but demand it, join civil service, and be an innovator in Bangladesh civil service. Thank you.